It's the only thing that is currently not sucking in Cleveland. It's the Barbecue Central barbecue Show. Central. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike your match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show, the show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs, you'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting the website the bbqcentral.com now let's get in the smoke here's your program host greg rempe welcome to the barbecue central show central lights how's your life Thank you for joining me. This is the Barbecue Central Show, where we talk about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. I am your program host, Greg Rempe. The show originates from Cleveland, Ohio, the barbecue capital of the North Coast. And if you didn't know, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city. Sure, we don't have the induction ceremonies here, but the Hall of Fame is right here in Cleveland. Come on down where you can buy a house for the price of a VCR. Great show lined up for you as usual. If you want to get in touch with the show, you can do that as well. Email me at bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. I will try and answer your emails on the air. If it is off show hours, I will, of course, harvest some of the best questions and use them on the next show. Also, if you want to do it via audio, you want to pick up your telephone and leave me a audio question. The Barbecue Central Show hotline is up and running. 216-220-0966. I know it's not an 800 number. I mean, if you're paying for long distance still, get with the times, man. Your cell phone should be unlimited at this point. If not, then certainly your house phone should have unlimited local and long distance calling, even into Canada, all the way up there. It should. Mexico. If you don't, get with the times. I did it. You can too. You don't have to continually pay for long distance. Come on, let's get with the technology. We're good. We're good like that, Central Lights. Again, you can email the show at bbqcentralradio at gmail.com. You can also leave an audio message on the Barbecue Central Show hotline, 216-220-0966. I'll try and answer the best ones that are left during the course of the week. I made mention last week that if you want a chance to win free stuff from the show, because we do have a large amount of companies that continually donate stuff, free stuff, you're going to have to do it one of two ways. You either have to be on Facebook and friend the Barbecue Central show up or me, Greg Rempe. It's one and the same page. I don't have my own personal page. I don't believe in that part of Facebook, but I do believe in the promotional part for business, companies, stuff like that. That's why the Barbecue Central show has a Facebook page. If you have a Twitter account, you can follow me on Twitter as well, at BBQ Central show, at BBQ Central show. So Facebook, friend me up, Greg Rempe, or Follow me on Twitter, BBQ Central Show. Have these two applications linked together. I have them linked together. When I make a post about first person to respond back to this or answer me this question with the right answer, first person to do that. And everybody has ample opportunity. It's all fair between Facebook and Twitter to win free stuff. Last week, we gave away three items that were outstanding. Fred's Music and BBQ stepped up. They're also TastyLicksBBQ.com. Gave away a brining kit. Gave away free turkey rub. Gave away a huge sampler pack of all the Tasty Licks barbecue rubs. And trust me, the menu for Tasty Licks barbecue rub is now substantial. Fred makes them all right there on site in beautiful Shillington, Pennsylvania, where Fred's Music and Barbecue is located. Really kind of an interesting setup. He's got the whole barbecue and grilling store and then attached on the other side, almost like, I guess, like a duplex, is a guitar store, like a music store. Because Fred is the smoking guitar player. So we appreciate Fred for stepping up. Donating free stuff to the Centralites. Again, it's Facebook friending. It's Twitter following. You can find me on Facebook, Greg Rempe, R-E-M-P-E. You can follow me on Twitter, BBQ Central Show. Coming up right around 17 past the hour, we're going to be having an interview with Scotty Johnson from CancerSucksChicago.com. Scotty is a guy that I've been looking to get on for some time now. He's got a very interesting story. You could obviously tell by the name that cancer is involved 
to a large degree in his case, unfortunately. So we'll talk to him about that. But Scott is also one of the major competitors that is really doing a kick-ass job of winning weekend in and weekend out. He's also going to be competing in the Jack Daniels coming up here in the next few weeks. So we'll talk to him about that. Scott actually won that event in 06. So we'll get some unique insight to the competition, how it's run, what it was like for him to win the first time, how he feels about going back to potentially win again. I believe there's only been like one or two teams that have actually won it multiple times. One of them being Johnny Trigg of Smoke and Triggers. I personally believe that Scott has a very good chance for winning again this year. I'm not basing that on anything formulated scientifically. It's just a gut feeling that I have. We have had a number of conversations with some of the more prominent names here over the last couple weeks. Joe Amore from Smoky Mountain Smokers helped me break down the Jack Draw list a handful of weeks ago when it was announced. Joe was picking Iowa Smoky D's to go away with victory. The Ray Lampy, Dr. Barbecue. He picked Myron Mixon from Jack's Old South. If you want to weigh in on that, go ahead, BBQ Central Radio at gmail.com. You can go to the website, the BBQ Central.com. Go down to the barbecue competitions section. You can see there's a thread that had been started there that has the complete jack draw. Go ahead and see the teams that you know, that you follow, that you see that are going to be taking place. Let me know who you think is going to win. Certainly love the back and forth between me and the Central Lights. So look for Scotty Johnson coming up a little bit more than half past the hour. All right, let's go ahead and check out What's been going on in the world of competition barbecue? We start with the Kansas City Barbecue Society Team of the Year Points Chase Standings. It hasn't really changed too much in the top five. First is Pellet Envy, Rod Gray, friend of the show. But it is now a very tight race between him and Iowa Smokey D's. Iowa Smokey D's has really been on a tear as of late here over the last few months. There is only a 30-point difference separating Iowa Smokey D's and Rod Gray of Pellet Envy. Munchin' Hogs at the Hilton is right in shooting distance at number three. Butcher Barbecue is number four. I Smell Smoke, number five. Kelly Wirtz and Four Legs Up Barbecue is currently in the sixth hole. Number seven is Smoke on Wheels. Mike Davis with Lotta Bull Barbecue is number eight. QOW number nine, JP Custom Smoke. Rounding out the top 10, just to give you an idea of how close the race is this year, from 1 to 10, there is no more than 258 points separating positions 1 through 10. So it's going to be a tight race. Everybody's going to be getting in the big competitions that they can. Remember, if you are a KCBS competing team, if you get into the competitions that have 50 plus registered it's like triple points you want to get into the big competition so you can raise your points standing as best you can we switch over to the florida barbecue association should come as no surprise that rob bagby of swamp boys competition team is still sitting atop the number one spot looking to hold on for the second consecutive year if you're a follower of fba you would know that kevin bevington from home bbq.com pretty much owned team of the year for the past five years Uh, prior to last year where Rob Bagby took over with Swamp Boys. So Swamp Boys looking to repeat in 09. Rob also starting his second term as Florida Barbecue Association president. So he's obviously doing a very good job down there. They continue to grow out competitions, even the struggling economy. And he continues to do very well on the competition side of things. He's actually going to be competing in the Jack Daniels as well here in the next few weeks. Always appreciate the time that he gives the show. So good luck to him. Still getting a lot of email from last week's interview. Todd Johns from Pork Pull and Plowboys, most recent winner of the American Royal Invitational. You can check them out at plowboysbbq.com. A lot of you emailing in saying that Todd is a class act, that the interview was great, it was very insightful. And remember, if you have questions for these guys, if you're just a backyard barbecue enthusiast like myself, if you have questions, the good thing about competition barbecue right now, as it sits, and we're right on that perch of it potentially jumping off into a much bigger stratosphere, Right now, you can get in contact with these guys. They have websites. They have contact information. Most of these guys will email you back in 24 hours or less, probably, depending if it's a weekend or not. If it's a weekend, a whole different idea because they're probably out competing because that's what they do. But they're all very approachable. They're all very helpful. And if it's the one thing that Todd did say during the interview last week is, you know, from a certain period of time during the competition, Everybody's trying to cut everybody else's throat out because they want to win the thing. But other than that, it's a community of help. 
it's camaraderie. It's a brotherhood. Everybody's looking to help everybody. If somebody's forgotten some tinfoil or a spice or a rub or whatever the case may be, everybody's looking to help everybody out. And that's what's great about competition barbecue. All right. That's the way the show is going to shake out. So sit back and enjoy it. Quick reminder about the good folks over at Yoder's Smoky Mountain Barbecue. You know, Yoder Smoky Mountain Barbecue, as you well remember, is the online leading distributor of Meadow Creek barbecue equipment. Their barbecue smokers, their pig roasters, chicken cookers, and grills are handcrafted in the Amish country of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And their goal is to give you outstanding value for the price. What do we always talk about here on the Barbecue Central Show? It's QPR, quality price ratio. No better textbook example than Yoder Smoky Mountain Barbecue with our Meadow Creek Barbecue Equipment. They help you enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for years to come. They also carry a complete line of barbecue rubs and sauces. Check them out right now on the net, SeriousBBQs.com. That's SeriousBBQs.com. Give Laverne Gingrich a hit up. Let them know the Barbecue Central Show sent you. BBQ Central Radio at gmail.com is the email address. If you want to leave an audio question, do so on the hotline, 216-220-0966. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Scotty Johnson from CancerSucksChicago.com will be on the line for an interview. Stick around. We'll be right back. The future of barbecue is already here at TheBarbecueGuru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose. Make ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS Competition and unload it from the trunk of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a 3-Bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at the BarbecueGuru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Joe B's gives you every vitamin and all the minerals naturally to get energy and feel great. Go to joebees.com. That's J-O-E-B-E-E-S.com. The only show of its kind on any kind of radio. Any kind of radio. It's the ba- ba- Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, Get in the smoke. Smoke. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back to the Barbecue Central Show here on the Barbecue Central Radio Networks. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Thanks for joining me. This portion of the show brought to you by the good folks at the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices, not to mention, by the way, not to mention, a host of other barbecue products that make your grilling and barbecue life easier. Four different kinds of automatic pit temperature control devices, for crying out loud. So, whether your budget is a constraint, whether your level of geekdom is a constraint, doesn't matter. They have you already hooked up at the Barbecue Guru. Two ways to check them out online at the BBQGuru.com or you can dial them up toll free on the telephone 800 288 Guru. That's 800 288 Guru as promised. Joining me now 
a guy that I've been looking to have on the show for some time now. Finally, logistically, it has worked out. No better time to do it now in the teeth of what most consider to be the heart of the barbecue competition uh, season. It's uh, Scotty Johnson from CancerSuckChicago.com. Scotty, thanks for joining me tonight. How are you? Very good, Greg. Good to have you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, certainly my pleasure, Scotty. Glad we could finally do this. I know we've been kind of Facebooking back and forth, and you're very busy uh, doing the competition scene, doing uh, some other fundraising things, which we'll get into here as well. Probably 50 different directions we could take this conversation right off the bat. But I guess first and foremost, something that I wanted to shed light on, and I had mentioned that in our correspondence back and forth. If people aren't familiar with the team name, where it originates from, uh, certainly don't want to take you back to probably one of the, the lowest points uh, in your life, but CancerSuckChicago.com. Why does it suck personally for Scotty Johnson? Uh, it all came from, Greg, my wife, uh, Corliss, um, uh, had colon cancer, stage four colon cancer. She was basically diagnosed with that uh, five months after our second daughter, Lexi, was born. Um, and through the whole process, she ended up having this button that she used to wear and honestly, she used to wear it proudly because, and all it said on it was cancer sucks. And uh, so that's where my team name came from. Uh, Crows actually passed away after battling um, this dreaded disease for um, two two years. And in 2003, she passed away. So it's been a little over six and a half years now for uh, my daughters and uh, myself. And, uh, you know, we're trying to move on as best as we can. So Now, this month notoriously that it's all the breast cancer awareness you sit, look on the nfl they're all wearing the the pink armbands and the pink cleats and all that stuff colon cancer typically associated more with the male population yeah you know it's uh it's really where it doesn't really happen to females as much and then it really doesn't happen to uh people that are in their 30s so um you know subsequently after corliss was diagnosed and that and we did a little more uh history into it um you know, and dug in and found out that her father had uh, colon cancer. But back then in the day, that it wasn't really as far advanced as what it was or is nowadays. Or I mean, it's even more advanced uh, now in the last six and a half years since Corliss has, has um, passed away, you know, with advancements in detection and that sort of thing. So uh, my girls, that it's a genetic thing, and they will definitely be checked uh, throughout their lives to, you know, make sure that they're healthy and have not uh, contracted any of this disease. We're uh, talking with Scotty Johnson, pitmaster of CancerSuckChicago.com. To kind of take uh, probably one of the worst events in your life, turn it into a positive, you start the CancerSuckChicago.com barbecue competition cooking team. Well, it just so happens to turn out that you're a pretty kick-ass barbecue competition guy. You win a lot of competitions that you take place in, or at least you're getting calls, you're in the top five, you're in the top 10. Currently, you're ranked 39th overall out of 4,400 competition teams in the Kansas City Barbecue Society. What does CancerSuckChicago.com as, as the foundation, as your winnings funnel in from competitions, how does that all kind of formulate into giving back to the cancer part? You know, I decided when I started this barbecue team, I actually started under my foundation name, and I, I you know, figured I was really going to in 2006 you know, throw it out there and put my cause out there. And, you know, people, I've had people, everyone that from folks at barbecue contests that I don't know come up to me and give me a hug for, you know, doing that, that they're survivors, that their parents or sisters, whoever had might have passed away or had battled a disease. And, you know, and that's why I wanted to put it out there. It's, uh, you know, it's an in-your-face kind of name. Um, that's what I was looking for. I mean, that's, uh, if you're going to go out for a cause, if you're going to try and attack the attack to attract attention, you know, what better way to do it? And that's what I did. It sort of has worked out so far. Do you have a tally on what you have been able to donate back to the cancer cause since you started this? Uh, you know, I don't have a specific number for myself as my, as, as a team. Um, I know last year, um, you know, was actually I got capped by the government on how much I'm allowed to give back <laughs> to it because then it becomes a private foundation. So, I have to play by all the IRS rules. So, um, you know, last year I had a heck of a lot better year. I mean, and to be honest with you, Greg, what the the way I look at barbecue is sort of a means to an end for me. I, uh, you know, it's great. Don't get me wrong. I, I love competition barbecue. I, you know, but my drive is really to, you know, try and wipe out cancer. Uh, if I can advance what I do by my barbecuing, 
then that's a good day for me. So, um, you know, don't get me wrong, all these barbecue trophies and awards and all that that I do, I appreciate the heck out of them. But, you know, probably one of the best trophies that I have here is a recognition for five years of of making donations for uh, cancer research from Northwestern University, where uh, we donate our monies to as a foundation. That's where Corliss was treated uh, here in Chicago. So, um, you know, that one's ranked right there next to my Jack Trophy and my KCBS uh, medal that I got last year. Just to get the website back out there again, cancersuckschicago.com. People listening tonight or thousands and thousands of people listen on the podcast after the show actually airs live. Are they able to make donations on the website to this cause? Yeah, absolutely. We have a um, a uh, PayPal account that we do that. Uh, we also take, you know, where people can mail us checks sort of thing. So we have definitely a couple different options for people to uh, to be able to donate and, and that sort of thing. So and then 100% of people's donations, we have absolutely no overhead you know, for the foundation, we're, I think, at like 98 percentile, which in, you know, some other organizations might be at 30 percent. We're at 98 percent. And basically that's because we have to cover expenses for mailings and that sort of thing. So as a foundation, absolutely everything goes to it. So people don't have to worry that if they're, um, you know, making a donation, 100 percent of the monies that we collect go for towards cancer research and or to assist those that are you know, fighting this terrible disease. We're talking with Scotty Johnson. He's the pit master of CancerSuckChicago.com. Obviously, the website, CancerSuckChicago.com, if you want to check that out. Uh, see Corliss's battle if you want to make a donation. We certainly encourage you to go over and do that. CancerSuckChicago.com, again, is the website. So let's uh, go ahead and transition over to maybe some lighter material. Competition, barbecue. It's widely described, fiercely competitive, but then almost in the same breath, it's a camaraderie, it's a brotherhood. I was talking with Todd Johns, the most recent winner of the American Royal Invitational last week, and he certainly had kind of reiterated or reverberated those same type of sentiments where there's definitely a certain period of time when everybody's looking to kind of cut each other's throats out. But before and after that, if you need aluminum foil, if you need rub, if you need some type of spice to get your get yourself going because you've forgotten it, always people are lending hands and, and doing all this stuff. When we were corresponding back and forth, we kind of talked about the American Royal, and there were some issues that you had had with that, and I just kind of wanted to, to bring that out tonight. You have had competed in that, and yeah. you, you did make mention that you thought it was a very good competition, but there were some things that you didn't necessarily agree with, and I just wanted you to kind of talk about those just to get them out there so everybody's understanding as to why you're not getting out there now. Yeah, absolutely. I, You know, to be honest with you, Greg, the, the Royal is probably one of my top, handful of contests that I enjoy doing. Um, my problem with the contest, you know, and as I'm sure many people know, I had a brisket uh, stolen out of, out of my cooker um, at, during the American Royal Invitational a couple of years ago. Uh, subsequent after that, the same night then, uh, there was a huge party directly behind, you know, our site. And we were in Invitational Row. We were in Lot B. Uh, and this team basically stole all my fire extinguishers uh, from my site. Um, they were allowed to compete the next day in the open. Um, you know, nothing happened to the team. And basically what happened out of the deal was I became the bad guy with the management at, at the Royal. And, um, you know, and then through it all, it was basically described to me that as cooks, we were not important. And I, as a direct quote to me was, we will find another cancer sucks, Chicago.com. Not that I'm special. I'm definitely not any special team that deserves special treatment over anyone else. But, you know, honestly, if you have that kind of attitude, I don't want to go to your contest. So it's never going to be always a never-ending well for the American Royal and to treat their cooks like that. It's just, you know, I don't. I just don't need to go. Is, is there a, a point or is there a possibility that something is going to change within the organization there that will entice you to get back out there again? Because... You know, one of the biggest conversations that take place, especially on this show and on a number of the barbecue forums, is you have the American Royal Invitational a couple weeks later than that. You have the Jack Daniels. And then, of course, the conversation ensues. Is the Jack better? Is the American Royal Invitational better? In regards to competition, I make the argument that the Invitational, as far as a competition standpoint, is better. 
I'm not saying one is more prestigious to win uh, over the other because currently I've won zero contests out of zero ones that I've attended. But being a talk show host and having an opinion, the talent seems to be available at the American Royal Invitational where there's a lot of pomp and circumstance for the Jack. Is there something that can change within the Invitational, American Royal Invitational, that will get you back out there? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I definitely haven't closed the door totally on that. You know, like I said, I enjoy seeing, you know, friends come in from California to Arizona to, you know, all my friends out in Massachusetts and the Nebs land. Um, you know, I enjoy coming in and doing that. I mean, do I want it to be closed? No. You know, I mean, honestly, I don't feel I ever did anything wrong on this whole thing. Um, you know, you would like to see them take a little bit softer stance and realize, you know, what we have to go through. Um, you know, some things that I had suggested to them after, you know, the things I had to go through, they've changed. Yeah, I mean, everyone can change. I mean, you realize you can sometimes make mistakes. And, you know, and I'm definitely one of the top guys at that, you know, where I do something and regret doing it. But, you know, you got to live with what mistakes you do. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm willing to, to move on and go on. You know, like I said, it's uh, one of my top favorite contests out there. It's, you know, I'll never sour on the Royal. You know, you can have a bad taste in your mouth, but give up on it. Nah, you know, I won't give up on it completely. That's for sure. I haven't locked the door and thrown away the key at least. We're talking with Scotty Johnson from cancersuckschicago.com. He's a pit master. So, I mean, what's your opinion of that? Do you weigh out on the fact that the Invitational probably has a better collection of talent as far as who's best of the best that calendar year versus the Jack? You know, the way I sort of look at it is the the Invitational is definitely everyone gets to go to if, as long as you pay your way to get there. And obviously, if you have a bigger spot, you pay for your spot as well. You can go and cook the Invitational. The, the mystique about the Jack is, you know, they do cut it down. They, do, they don't invite every single champion to it, which, you know, does that lower the talent level? I'm not going to argue about it, you know. I mean, that's for sure. It's Both contests have their place, you know, in our KCBS-style cooking, and uh, I sure should, I, I wouldn't shortchange either one of the contests. I mean, obviously, I lean towards the, the Jack as being more prestigious just because I've won it, but, you know, if you put me and Todd together, I'm sure we would both argue ourselves on that and two are blue in the face. You know, I, I wouldn't pick one or the other of being more prestigious. And we can easily transition into this next topic. Obviously, the Jack Daniels coming up here in a couple weeks. You won it in 2006, looking to go back and become either the the second or third team that has ever won it multiple times. I believe Johnny Trigg is, he's maybe he's the only one that's actually won it. He's the it. only one. Bart Clark was on. He won it individually, and then he won it also with Danny Teal. So. All right, so you're looking to join the ranks of Johnny Trigg, so certainly not yeah, bad company. Yeah, not bad company to keep if you're able to pull that off this year. No <laughs> pressure, of course, but the Barbecue Central show has uh, pegged you yes, to go I back heard, and win. Yeah. I heard your pick. (laughs) Ray Lampy has Myron Mixon. Joe Amore uh, thinks Iowa Smokey D's is uh, looking good for the Jack this year. But who who are they? And I got to tell you one thing, Greg. To be even mentioned with teams like that to me is just, you know, it's special for me. So I'm a fan of barbecue as much as I am a competition cook. So to be, you know, mentioned in the same breath as those guys, I mean, Myron Mixon is the man. And, you know, Darren is probably one of the top competition cooks that I have or that we have in this upper Midwest region. I mean, if there's a guy out there that, you know, is going to bring it to you every single contest, that's the guy. So Yeah, they've been really uh, pouring it on here over the last couple months. Looking ahead here to the Jack Daniels, do you cook that competition differently than you would normally because of I continue to say that there's kind of that gray area that the KCBS kind of pussyfoots around with where they, they qualify judges in, but it's not a KCBS sanctioned event. Yeah, you know, I mean, one way I like to look at it is some of those judges that have been there have basically judged probably 20 Jack Daniels. I think this is the 21st year. So these judges that have judged that many times have literally tasted more championship and world championship barbecue then, you know, if you want to compare it to the Royal Invitational, some of those judges at the Jack have tasted that. So where they might be lacking by, you know, not judging in 10 contests a year on KCBS Tour, they've literally tasted some of the best barbecue ever made, you know, at the Jack Daniels. How do you feel your chances are this year, Scotty? Yeah, you know, I, I guess I'm as good as... Uh, Good as everyone else. I mean, does, I does winning it in the past give you more confidence going back into it or no? Uh, 
well, it doesn't take away from it, that's for sure. But, you know, it's uh, I don't think you can get too cocky. It wouldn't be too good to get too cocky going into it. Am I comfortable? Yeah, you know, it's uh, I've been sort of comfortable with my food all year this year. It hasn't shown in the standings. You know, it's right there. It's uh, a lot of part, bar, our barbecue is uh, hitting the right tables for that day. You know, as long as I know that my product is consistent and where I'm looking for it, you know, it's putting that bat on the ball, and whether or not it goes out of the park, that's uh, another story. Talking with Scotty Johnson, he's the pit master of CancerSuckSChicago.com. Go ahead and check that website out, please. Uh, go ahead and see what that's all about. Make a donation if you can, CancerSuckSChicago.com. Scotty, for the teams that are going down there for the first time, do they have a propensity to actually become a little starstruck with all the other big-name competitors that actually make it in there? Yeah, I would definitely say so. It's, uh, you know, it's a probably one of the reasons... You know, when I went down in 2006 and my dad had passed away that Friday, I basically learned about it as I was going to the Cooks meeting. I basically went into a shell, you know, and I hid in my trailer and hid in my spot. And, I mean, I visited with people that came by and that sort of thing. I mean, a lot of people came by to give me support. But I wasn't out. I wasn't out, you know, seeing being awestruck and all that sort of thing. So I sort of missed all that. And that's probably one of the reasons why I was able to concentrate and uh, turn out the product that I did that year. But yeah, it's it's intimidating. It's definitely intimidating. Uh, you know, Lynchburg is idealistic for a barbecue contest. It's in the fall. A ton of people. They do cool things. The Jack Daniels brand is everywhere, and it's uh, it's definitely intimidating. You know, I think if you've been there before and have seen it and can adjust to it and move on there, you know. I, but I guarantee you, there's going to be a whole bunch of cooks out there changing their cooking around and changing. What they did to win a grand championship. They'll be doing differently at the Jack Daniels. How's your white meat chicken looking, at Scotty? <laughs> I I actually like it. So I've uh, I've been cooking that that darn chicken for the last month or so, and. I'm sick of it. You know, you can only eat chicken three days a week so much, and I'm literally sick of it right now. But I, I've definitely taken it a different uh, angle this year, and we'll see what I can do with it. So I'm not going for a win either on the chicken. I'm just going for, you know, 11th place chicken, as I always say. Uh, CancerSuckChicago.com Pitmasters, who we're talking to, it's Scotty Johnson. Check it out, the website, CancerSuckSChicago.com. He's currently ranked 39th overall on KCBS. He'll be taking place in the Jack Daniels, looking to add another victory, a world championship. He won it in 2006. Scotty, appreciate the time tonight for coming on the Barbecue Central Show. Let's do it again. Absolutely, Greg. Thanks for having me. All right, take care. That's Scotty Johnson if you need him. CancerSuckChicago.com. Please go ahead and take some time to visit the website, read about Corliss, uh, read about her fight, and why the barbecue competition team was made, what they're doing with winnings and giving back. If you take time to actually think about it a little bit, it's the barbecue aspect of it is actually very secondary. As Scotty said during the interview, it's a means to an end. So check it out. It's cancersuckschicago.com. He's my pick, by the way, to win the Jack Daniels this year. So hopefully he knows that it, that it goes unsaid that if he actually is able to win it here in a few weeks, he'll be back on the Barbecue Central show to talk about the victory. We're going to step away and take a quick break. When we come back, we will wrap this bad boy up. You're listening to the Barbecue Central show here on the Barbecue Central radio networks. Stick around. We'll be right back. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the big green egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and country smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. You gotta try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U Fame. Check Fred out on the web at Fred's Music and BBQ.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Joe B's is only $99 for a big six month supply with free shipping, and you get a seventh month free. That's less than 50 cents a day for energy and to feel great. Go to Joe B's.com. Big, 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 big name interviews. Big name interviews. Coverage of competition barbecue. Competition barbecue. And the only host willing to give his honest opinion on all topics in the world of barbecue. 
It's the Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue has never been easier with the Barbecue Guru. The Barbecue Guru is a temperature control and monitor for all pits, charcoal, wood, electric, your pit. It easily attaches to any smoker or pit and gives you simple, trouble-free control of your temperatures so you can make championship-quality barbecue every time and all the time. And it's location-free. Take it anywhere. This amazing breakthrough in barbecue technology is a microprocessor-controlled draft system that uses temperature monitors and a small fan to keep your temperatures constant. The stainless steel Guru Pit Minder gives you a choice of controls from 90 to 370 degrees. So cold smoking, pepper drying, making cheese or jerky, or fabulous briskets and ribs is nothing short of effortless. The Procom 4 lets you monitor your pit from up to 600 feet away. And there's more. Check out the full line of products and accessories for the future of barbecue with new items on the way. Visit thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show on L.A. Talk Radio. Back and better than ever, it's the Barbecue Central Show. Thanks for joining me tonight. I'm your host, Greg Rempe. And thanks to Scotty Johnson for joining me last segment. CancerSucksChicago.com is the website. CancerSucksChicago.com. Again, check that out. I probably could have went easily another hour with Scotty just talking about uh, competition barbecue. Had at least three or four different segment subjects that I would have liked to hit with him. But hey, that's the great thing about talk shows. When the guest pans out and he actually is better than advertised or better than I anticipated, he goes in the queue, and he'll be back around, so no doubt about it. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that we can talk to him about. This portion of the show brought to you by D-Dog's Barbecue Rub. What's worse than finding a great product on the Internet and then realizing you have to pay shipping costs? Oh, I hate that. So here's what you can do. You find your regional little grocery store that sells a bunch of barbecue rubs and sauces or your one-off mom-and-pop fireplace and barbecue grilling store or whatever the case may be, and you say, look, there's this guy in Arizona. His name's Darren, D-A-R-I-N, Darren. And if you email him, he will coordinate with you how you can get his rubs and sauces in your store, and then I don't have to pay for shipping. Yes! D-A-R-I-N at ddogsbbq.com is how you want to do it. Darren will take care of the rest. You give him that information, or you give your store Darren's email, and soon enough you'll be stocked up Jones. With D Dog's barbecue rubs and sauces. And as we all know, D Dog's barbecue rub is better than ketchup. You know, there was a few things that I wanted to talk about. We have a few minutes left. There's this, uh, I don't know if you've heard about it, there's this swine flu going around. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm not a doctor. Maybe I'm talking out of school here, but that's all right. It's my show. I'm allowed to. The swine flu, if we drop the swine part, that's really what it is. It's the flu, okay? I know. If you, I think if you go back and you Google the flu and you go on and do mortality rates on the flu and all that good stuff, you'll find probably the same amount of people might be uh, getting sick with the regular flu as they are with this uh, H1N. Why do they call it the swine flu? What, why does it got to be about the pigs? It has nothing to do with pork product whatsoever. It's the H1N1. There's a local guy here in Cleveland called it the H-I-N-I. The H-I-N-I. Get that big stuff out of here. No, I don't think so. H1N1. It's really just the flu. So go ahead and get your flu shot if you get it. Stay home if you're sick and throwing up or doing whatever. But really, this might be, might be blown a little bit out of proportion. Swine flu. H1N1. And again, let's just drop the swine part out of it, especially the barbecue and the grilling guys. I mean, who doesn't love bacon and pork butt and pork ribs and pork chops and pork loin? Probably 90% of the stuff that we eat is pork when it comes to barbecue or grilling. Leave that swine flu out of it for crying out loud. As a matter of fact, just call it the freaking flu because that's what it is. The flu. You've had the flu for years. Never made the news. Flu has never made the news, man. 
Come on. Also, and I did want to ask Scotty about this before, but there's that, there, there's always kind of this recurring theme of pellet cookers and these barbecue gurus as they're used in competition. And maybe not even so much the competition, but people using them now in their homes and people using them at competitions. Using the barbecue gurus or these automatic temperature control devices at homes and, and at competitions. And that somehow those are taking away from the art of, of learning how to control the fire and, and learning how to, the fire management of the whole thing. And to a certain degree, um, I'm not going to disagree with that. I mean, it doesn't take a, it doesn't necessarily take, I think there's probably two kinds of skill sets taking place during barbecue cooking. There's the part where you actually know, you have to know how to cook, you have to know the temperatures, you have to know what's happening during uh, the times of the cook, during certain portions of the cook, the, the fat gelatinous breakdowns and where the, 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 the collagen and all that stuff and the fat rendering out takes place. But when you're using certain kind of, uh, kinds of cookers or you're using certain kinds of devices... And you don't have to get the cooker from zero degrees to barbecue temperature. Well, then we're kind of walking a weird line. I mean, if you've never learned how to build a fire, if you've never learned how to, if you've never learned those fire management skills of how to maintain a fire within a certain degree, because obviously when you're using a stick burner, and I have a stick burner in my backyard that I use fairly regularly. I also have two Weber Smoky Mountain cookers that are fire or that are charcoal driven majority and then you have your wood chunks for smoke flavor but with the close when you add a log i like to call it cooking on averages when you add the log you get that big burst of flame and your temperature inherently is going to spike up a little bit so maybe if you're trying to keep it in that 240 range that 225 235 range when you add that first log or that new log it'll catch you might spike up 10 or 15 degrees, but then it slowly kind of works its way down and you're using the dial and you're looking at the firebox to see how that fire is kind of weaning down before you add that extra log. And that's where kind of that fire management comes into play with the FE cookers and the Traeger cookers. And, and if you're using an automatic temperature control device, you don't learn that part. And I'm not saying it's necessarily vital, especially in competition, because there's a lot of other things that you have to be concerned about as far as being fresh, being able to get some shut-eye, being able to put together your presentation boxes, and all of that. And to not contradict myself, I think a lot of these guys that are running those on the competition circuit probably have stick burners in their backyard that they like to tool around with anyway, and that they probably know fire management to a large degree and that they want to have the option to multitask either at the competition site or even at their home. A lot of, a lot of guys have Effie cookers and Traeger cookers at home. So what, where am I, where am I weighing out on this? I think if you, do, if you've just bought a, a, a cooker, a pellet cooker or whatever, and you've never learned fire management, you're missing out on a portion of, of, of barbecue in general, you're missing out on the whole live fire aspect of it. Because basically what you're doing is dumping pellets in a cooker. You're hitting a button and it spikes up. You set the temperature. It's like an oven, but it's run on wood pellets, more or less. That's hard to argue. I mean, that's kind of what it is. Same thing with a barbecue guru. Different setting for competitions because there's other things going on. But if you have one, right, if you have one and you've never learned the art of fire, I think you're missing out on something. I do think that there's an art form that, needs to be passed down generation to generation. People love, inher men inherently love, well, okay, majority of men inherently love fire, love to play with fire, love to learn about it, love to see fire spark up when you're adding new logs and wood and how it burns down and all that great stuff. I do. I love it. Having that close cooker has added a new dimension to my barbecue ability. But I think if you don't, if you've never started out with some type of live fire cooker, if it's been one you just hit a button and set a temperature and walk away from, you're cheating yourself out of a portion of the art form of barbecue. Now, how does that relate to competition barbecue? We could certainly argue about it for the next uh, 24 to 36 years. 
I wanted to ask Scotty about that too, by the way. And Garnish. I wanted to ask Scotty about Garnish too. But these are all subjects that we can uh, we can do next time. No doubt about it, because there will be another show uh, next week. Don't forget to uh, friend me up on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter, BBQ Central Show on Twitter. Uh, just search for me on Facebook, Greg Rempe, R-E-M-P-E. I have those two applications linked together. I will be doing a barbecue sauce giveaway tomorrow. So if you're listening to the show live, you have a heads up. If you're getting it on Podcast Jones, hopefully you haven't listened to it too late. So you can either follow me on the Twitter, you can friend me up on Facebook, and you could be getting your hands on a two-pack of P.D. River Swamp Sauce. So that's great. Thanks to my guest tonight, Scotty Johnson from CancerSucksChicago.com. Check that website out, CancerSucksChicago.com. Dot com And if you can, make a donation to it. Help out. Scotty is giving his winnings back to it, 100%. And I thank him for, uh, for a great conversation on, on all fronts. Next week, we have a big show. We have Myron Mixon talking about the Jack Daniels coming up. Also, a potential conversation with Ray Lampy. Twice in one month, the good doctor. Ray Lampy talking about tailgate warriors. This is your program host, Greg Rempe, and proud U.S. American. Good night now. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a three-bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. It's the only show where it's okay to rub your neighbor's breasts. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Barbecue Central Show. Joe B's gives you every vitamin and all the minerals naturally to get energy and feel great. Go to joebees.com. That's J-O-E-B-E-E-S dot com. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at Fred's Music and Barbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and Country Smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. You've got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA.